Um, I'm pleased to be presenting tonight on fall gardening. A uh, little bit about um, my background. I manage um, LTPL Grows for our library and it's an initiative that uh, focuses on gardening and sustainable living. And uh, it includes our seed library, our demonstration garden, and also I manage the Lyon Township Community Garden. And I know a lot of our um, participants tonight are community gardeners. I see that. Um, we're going to record tonight's program and have it on in the future so that if anyone misses it, uh, they'll still have a chance to watch it. Um, the thing you can do tonight is, uh, you know, ask questions in the chat. Um, we're, if you want to ask questions in the chat, uh, we're probably going to answer those closer to the end of the program, but please ask them as they come to you so neither one of us forget. Um, I'm going to try to get to all of them. Um, as always, please re be respectful for your communications in the chat. Um, I find gardeners to be exceptionally nice people, so I don't anticipate a problem. <laughs> so, you, but uh, just in case, I wanted to let you know. And um, we're still getting to know how to work this, you know, these types of presentations. So please bear with me if um, we have to stop for a second and if something's not working right. Um, I wanted to also show you, uh, before we get started, uh, if you can hover over my picture, you might be able to um, see it better. But we do have some books. Um, it's, it's showing weird, so I'll, we, okay, there we go. Thank you. Um, this is well, this one's called the Winter Harvest Handbook by Elliot Coleman, and we've got a book called Backyard Winter Gardening by Caleb Warnock. We've got a book on growing winter food by Linda Gray. We have How to Grow Winter Vegetables by Charles Dowding. And last but not least, we've got the Year Round Vegetable Gardener by uh, Nikki Javor. And these are all books that are available at our library to check out if you want to go more in depth on the subject that we have tonight. Um, there's also a lot of information on the Michigan State University website. Um, you can go into their website and search, uh, but you know, they've got a lot of stuff that's particular to Michigan, um, on all kinds of subjects. So I highly recommend them as a source for information if you wanna um, find out more. Um, so I think we'll get started with the program. Um, so planning and planting your fall garden. Um, what are some of the advantages to fall gardens? Um, is that when you grow cool weather crops in the spring in Michigan, sometimes our spring Michi our Michigan springs are completely, that we go from like winter to summer with very little spring. Um, it, and so these, as these are coming to maturity, it's starting to get very hot and they may not be grow as well or they may not taste as good. Um, maturing in cool weather keeps a lot of these crops mild and sweet. Uh, the sugars or the starches start to turn to sugar when it gets cool and that's why they taste better. Um, bugs are usually less of a problem but not necessarily. Um, you can extend the harvest from your garden. You know a lot of people think well this is done and I'm it's over with. Well you can keep going until um, October even November sometimes depending on when we get our first really hard frost. Um, we generally get more rain in the fall, which is awesome, because um, not less watering is required. Um, more pleasant to work outside because it's not so darn hot. And I appreciate that a lot. Um, people are often home more in the fall. Um, school has started. 
well, we hope. Um, and you, 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 just more people are home in the fall than they are during the summer. And sometimes for whatever reason, um, you moved, you, you've uh, taken a vacation. Some people just completely miss planting their spring garden. And this is your second chance in the middle of summer to uh, have another try. So all is not lost in gardening. Um, the first thing you want to do is go into your um, garden and kind of harvest what needs to be harvested. A lot of beets, carrots, onions, um, garlic is, if you planted garlic last fall, it's probably just about ready to be harvested. Some people around here already are. I'm kind of letting mine sit just a little longer. But it's, you know, your green beans, herbs, if you've got anything that's come out and you've got a blank space, then that's where you start putting in uh, these fall garden crops. Um, take out anything that's, uh, you know, died or withering or is over with. Uh, take it all out and put it in your compost pile. Um, and then also take a look at the things that are still in your garden that you really want to go into the fall. Uh, Brussels sprouts is a good example. Um, they're, they're a fall crop in the sense that you harvest them in the fall, but they have to be planted sooner than July. So, you know, there's, there's, there's still a fall crop, but they've already got to be in by now. Um, same with leeks and storage cabbages, um, co collards and rutabagas, celery, pole beans usually take longer. So those things you just, you can go through, you can put some compost around them, kind of give them a little midsummer boost, um, a weeding, a watering, make sure that they're, you know, they're clear for their second part of their growth. Um, and then as we'll go on the next slide, start to choose crop to, crops to plant in those empty spots. Um, you've got a choice of producing more food or if you, if you don't want to produce more food in that spot, you can plant a cover crop, which we'll deal with a little bit later in the program. Um, what you want to sow in midsummer are quick growing and or frost hardy plants. And what I mean by that is some of the quick growing crops that you can plant right now, you can still put in summer squash like zucchini and um, and crookneck squash, or you can put in um, snap beans, uh, bush beans, because they all will, they have maybe 50, 60 day uh, maturity rates. So they'll come in under the wire before, long before we get a frost. Um, so you can plant, you do need to plant them now though. You can't wait too much longer. Um, or you can plant frost hardy plants. They may have a bit longer that it takes for them to mature, but they like maturing in the cool weather. So they'll, and some of those um, frost hardy plants are um, your greens, which are lettuce, endive, spinach, arugula, kale, mustard, Swiss chard. Um, greens are the best, I think the quickest and best thing to grow in your fall garden. And you can keep succession planting them right up until practically frost. Um, because they grow so fast and you can eat them in any stage. You can eat them as baby greens or you can eat them mid green, mid size or you can wait till they mature. But you know, you can eat them in any size so you can keep planting them right up until the bitter end. Uh, root crops take a little bit longer to mature. So you wanna start those about now. Um, and that includes beets, carrots, um, turnish, turnips, radishes, and daikon radish, scallions, and kohlrabi. Um, the turnips and radishes that um, we grow in the spring are often so hot and spicy and bitter that some people don't, not bitter, but some people just don't care for them. And that's because they're maturing as, as the heat is coming on. Um, so growing them in the fall, you get a whole different product. Um, you get a sweeter, um, crunchier, uh, vegetable um, turnips and radishes grown in the fall are, are amazing. And if you think you don't like them, um, you might want to reconsider fall grown um, 
turnips and radishes and daikon radishes too. They're the bigger, longer ones. Um, they take a little bit longer, but they are so good grown and, and they are so hardy that even when we start getting light frosts, they'll continue to grow and um, without missing a beat. Um, now for Plants like broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Chinese cabbage, pak choy, it's a little bit better if you start them indoors now or in a very cool and shady place. Um, so to get and set them out when they're already growing, it's, they, they do a little bit better as transplants. Um, some of the herbs that you can grow in the fall are cilantro, parsley, chervil, and dill. Um, now dill is, is a warm weather crop, but it grows so fast and you can plant it now and it'll still form a leafy green. Um, you won't, may, may not get a tall plant with a big seed head on it, but you can use the, um, the dill uh, weed for anything, you know, that you would use that for. Um, short season peas, you can put, use snaps, shell, or snow peas, but you do need to get a variety that has a really um, short growing season. You don't want to get one that's 70 or 80 days. You want to get one that's more like um, 40 or 50 days, maybe 60. Um, so, you, you know, checking the dates on your plants is, is really important to make sure you're not getting something that's going to take longer to mature than the time you've got. Um, garlic is an excellent fall pro product. You can put it in usually in September or October here in Michigan. Um, it starts to grow and then it just overwinters in the ground and then the spring it starts to grow rapidly and very early. Um, and then you harvest them right about now, usually around mid to late July is when you harvest your garlic. Um, potatoes, uh, if you grow spring potatoes, early potatoes, you always have those little ones that are about, you know, the size of a quarter or so, and you can save those and use those as seed potatoes in the fall. Um, you are not gonna get as big a crop, but you, you, you certainly can get, some, and they, they can stay in the ground until, you know, the frost, so you can leave them in there and let them mature as long as they can. And as I mentioned before, summer squash, dill, and bush, bush snap beans, um, they're not frost hardy, but they grow so fast that you can start them late. And one, one advantage is, especially with the summer squash, the zucchini and summer squash, is that a lot of times in the, in the heat of the summer and the humidity, they get mildew, they get um, borers get in the stems. You know, they, sometimes they're looking really rough in the latter part of the, summer, of the summer. And if you start some now, they're going to have kind of out, outrun some of those other problems and they'll, and they grow so fast. If you keep them watered, they'll grow really fast and you'll get a lot of squash before you get a frost. Um, and as I mentioned before, Brussels sprouts and another one of root crop called parsnips are fall vegetables, but they need to be planted earlier. So, um, that's something to consider for next year. If you don't have them in now, it's a little too late for, to put them in. Um, I just have some pictures here kind of illustrate if you're not familiar with some of these. Uh, mustard greens is another one that's, um, you know, a lot of people really like mustard greens grown in the fall if they don't like them in the spring because they, they get too strong. Um, beets are good anytime. You can start sowing beets uh, before the last frost and keep sowing them until, you know, for several more weeks now. Uh, turnips, like I mentioned, there's, there's great, there's big turnips that are about maybe three inches around. They, you would want to put those in sooner, but there's little turnips um, that only come in at about an inch, inch and a half around. They grow really fast. Sometimes those will be ready in 30, 35 days. And um, they're, they're super sweet and super, um, easy to cook or just eat raw. We like pickling them, same as radishes. Um, just a quick pickle. Uh, you don't have, it's not something you have to put in a jar. You just uh, put them in a bowl with some vinegar and salt and maybe a little sugar if, if you're so inclined and it just makes a great um, addition to a meal. And as I mentioned, carrots, peas, kohlrabi is another um, not as commonly grown uh, vegetable. It's I don't, it's kind of gets lumped in with the root vegetables, but it really kind of grows right on top of the soil. 
Uh, kohlrabi is, does not, it needs a little bit longer, so you'd want to start it about now if you wanted to grow kohlrabi in your fall garden. Of course, spinach and kale, two super hardy greens um, that uh, grow excellent in the fall. And I've had sometimes kale, but I've had spinach over winter before and come up again in the spring. So that's always a nice thing because it's super early and it's some of the first greens you can pick. So uh, unless you're really, you know, want to clean out your garden, I, I always leave a few spinach plants for early greens. Um, kale grows fast, you know, it's not going to be three feet tall and with giant leaves if you plant it now, but it's going to be plenty big enough to cut um, for salads and, and stir fries. Um, daikon radishes, um, the one that's shown is a watermelon radish and it's a little bit bigger, but again, so good. Um, you can use, you can cook with it or you can pickle it or just eat it raw. And then of course the little radishes in the corner are the ones most of us are familiar with. Um, they grow really fast, um, sometimes 25, 30 days. So you could plant those in a succession too. You could every week, you could put out just a few more seeds and have some every week. Uh, broccoli is a little trickier in the fall. You have to get a really fast maturing variety. Um, unfortunately, in the seed library, we stick to open pollinated varieties and most of those are not real early maturing. Um, but we, you know, there's a, there's a couple. Uh, but if you want to grow a hybrid type, there are some some very quick maturing broccolis out there. You just can't save seed from them if you're so inclined. Um, lettuce, all kinds of lettuces. Um, you can grow leaf lettuce or you can start, you know, growing indoors like with the cabbages and the cauliflower and things. You can plant lettuce seeds and then put out individual plants to make heads. So whatever is your preference. And of course scallions um, are, are an option. Quick, they grow quickly. Arugula, chard, beet greens, Chinese cabbage, pak choy, endive, and then the various cabbages, cauliflowers, and broccolis. All good candidates for so fall sowing. And of course garlic, as I mentioned before. There's some other perennial alliums in the onion family that you can also put out in the fall. Um, the one that's shown on the right is walking onions, and they, it's because they form little bulbs at the top of the stem, and as the weight of the bulb, as the bulbs grow, the weight pulls them down to the ground, and they root there, and then hence they can move around your garden if you, if they, if you let them. Um, if you don't want them to move around your garden, you just cut off the bulbs and give them to a grateful friend. Um, you can also use the bulbs, they're, they're small, but you can use them for anything you'd use onions. Um, garlic, like I said, it's going to be, we're starting to harvest garlic in Michigan now. Um, the type of the shown is called a hard neck garlic. Um, that's the best for growing in Michigan. When you go to the store and buy garlic, it, it, um, especially at a chain store, you're usually getting garlic that's grown in California or gasp china um, and one reason one way that they say to tell chinese garlic from california garlic is if you look at the pictures see the root cluster there the roots have been trimmed but they're still there whereas chinese garlic they actually scoop with a tool they take the roots off of them um, that's because they can't import them into the country with the roots on them um, is there something really horrible about Chinese garlic? Some people think there is. They, they feel like there's more regulation in this country about wh where you can grow plants and what, what you can put on them, what you can fertilize them with, what kind of herbicides can be used, um, and the general pollution you know, of the area. So most people that do want to grow um, garlic want to grow or, or want to buy garlic, they want to buy Chinese or American grown garlic if possible. Um, hard neck garlic has a stem that comes right up through the middle of the garlic. Um, it's hardier to grow here in Michigan. Um, the, uh, the other type of garlic that you usually find in the store has lots of cloves in it as a rule, whereas hard neck garlic has maybe eight or nine 
seven big cloves around a stem in the middle. Um, you can usually find hard nut garlic at um, farmers markets at this time of year because the local farmers around in Michigan grow hard neck. Um, you can order hard neck garlic from seed suppliers. Um, it's pretty pricey to do that way. So I like to, but if you want a particular variety, that's one way of knowing what you're getting. Um, but usually I've had really good luck with farmer's market uh, garlic. And now that I've got a good population, I just save my own garlic to replant. Um, but if you're starting for the first time, you can certainly buy it to use. Uh, one of the reasons that certain plants do better in the fall than other is because of day length sensitivity. Um, and technically it's actually not so much how long the days are, but how long the nights are that has to do with um, the circadian rhythm of plants. Um, after early November, they get less than 10 hours of daylight. Most plants just kind of shut down and they may be harvestable beyond that point. Um, but they, they really aren't going to grow anymore. Um, so what they consider long day plants, um, they start to flower and produce as they move toward the longest days. So when you, again, when you plant lettuce or spinach or mustard, Asian green turnips, radishes, scallions, well, not so much scallions, but the others, as you plant them in the spring and you move towards summer and the summer is getting long, that, that the, the, the short nights and long days are telling those plants, hey, it's time to set seed. And so that's why your lettuce bolts and your mustard bolts and your spinach bolts to seed and um, it's pretty much done producing at that point. Now when you plant them in the fall, um, they're getting the opposite message and they send up lots of lush greenery. They're very like, less like, much less likely to bolt the seed if, if they do at all. Um, Cauliflower, I, I've struggled personally as a gardener, I've struggled with cauliflower for years before I understood that it forms heads as days get shorter. And so when you plant cauliflower in the spring, it's the days are getting longer and they, they form these funny little heads or no heads at all, or they bolt to seed or they do something weird other than form a nice big white uh, head of cauliflower. So then I, I discovered planting them in the fall is awesome because you actually get a head of cauliflower at that point. Um, I do find that I like to transplant, I like to start the seeds indoors and transplant them out. Um, it tends to work a little better, but you can direct so if you want to. Um, now the reason you usually just grow scallions in the fall is because um, in the northern latitudes, um, the long days tell the onions to bulb up, but scallions, we're not growing for a bulb, we're just growing them for, um, uh, to use as green onions, so they, they can be grown pretty much any time of year. Um, and, mo and the rest of our garden, you know, a lot of them are day neutral. They, they, they're more dependent on temperature than they are on day length. So your tomatoes, that's why you don't plant your tomatoes in April. You plant them at the end of May or beginning of June because they want the warm temperatures. That's what's going to make them grow. Same with corn and cucumber. Miss Pam, we have a question. When do you start your cauliflower to seed indoors? I would do it right now. It's uh, that way you can set them out as soon as they get big enough. Um, you don't have, they don't have to be real big, but it just kind of gives them a head start. Um, so usually by the beginning or middle of July, you want to start your seeds for things like cauliflower, um, broccoli, or cabbage. And for cabbage, you want to pick a short variety, short season variety. You don't want to pick a storage cabbage or some cabbages have, you know, 90 day, you know, growth, um, mature till they're mature and but there's some that are much much quicker than that and those are the varieties that you want to pick so what to plant when uh, here in this part of michigan our average first frost date is october 7 to 14. so you count back from that date those dates when considering um what you're going to plant 
Um, now, as I mentioned before, things like greens, you can use them in any size, so you don't have to worry so much about maturity on those. So indoors in mid-July um, or outdoors, if you, if you want to plant them outdoors, if you don't have the uh, facilities, I guess you could say, to uh, plant plants indoors, um, you could put them outdoors and just kind of put them in a, in a cool, maybe semi-shaded area until they germinate and start to grow. And then you could gently take a trowel and relocate them to the part of the garden where you want them to grow and space them accordingly. Um, so, and you can use, as, you know, if you've ever attended my seed starting programs or somebody else's seed starting programs or started seeds yourself, then you'll find that um, you can use just about anything to start seeds as long as, you know, you can use yogurt cups, you can use, Egg cartons are a little shallow, but if they're only going to be in there for a brief time, you can use egg cartons. And so, and just uh, a good light mix, and you can plant them. And like I said, as soon as they've got um, a little bit of size on them, just make sure they get a lot of light if they're indoors, they're either under a grow light or right next to a south facing window so that they, they don't um, get spindly. Um, so right now outdoors, you, you know, you can sh directly sow right into the ground, beets, carrots, peas, summer squash, bush beans, uh, scallions, dill, um, choose varieties with short maturity dates. Don't, um, don't do a 70 or 80 day plant, do a, do a 50 day or 55 day plant. Uh, most seed packets will say, that you purchase from the store will say how long it takes for them to get mature. Um, you can keep even in you can keep planting these things in early August. A lot of these um, things you can just keep replanting every couple of weeks. Do some more, um, and as and as you get into August and even early September, you can still do your leafy greens, um, small turnips and radishes, and cilantro. Cilantro is an herb that likes cool weather so it doesn't like to be frozen but it does like cool weather so you can and it grows rapidly so you can keep planting that right up to the end and of course as we mentioned you know plant your hard net garlic cloves in September or October. Um, caring for your fall gardens is the same as caring for your spring and summer garden um, but you can do you know you want to keep it weeded and get the soil prepared before you plant. Uh, add some compost to kind of revitalize the soil if, it, if it's kind of spent. Um, you want to keep your newly planted seeds and transplant watered and protected. Uh, it's still, you know, it's the weather we are having this summer has been pretty hot and we, I'm hoping that August isn't <laughs> as hot as July, but you know, it could be it happens. So you just want to make sure you keep your little seeds um, uh, watered and sometimes you have to water them two or three times a day because they're not they're not planted very deep and they the top layer of the soil really dries out fast. Um, you can even um, kind of gently put some mulch, um, loosely put some like grass clippings that are dried. Never put wet fresh grass clippings on your clippings on your garden because it can they can heat up as they're uh, they're decompose and cause actually burn your the plants around them so it's best to let them like dry on the lawn um, and then gather them up and put them around your plants they also don't use if you you get lawn treat your lawn treated for um, leaves broadleaf weeds, if you get it treated for bugs, slugs, um, grubs, then it's probably best not to use the grass from your lawn. And But you can also use leaves, straw, um, things like that, that to put around your plants. And your, you can even kind of put them around your new starts and just maybe keep the part where the seeds are open and mulch all around them. Um, it just keeps the um, soil cooler and keeps the um, water in the ground instead of dehydrating the plants. Um, 
you can do it without any mulch, but just like I said, you just make sure you keep an eye on them and water them. Um, insect damage, um, while some insects are kind of fading out by that time of year, others kind of get momentum. So you, you can't assume that there won't be any bugs. But as it gets cooler, the bugs really slow down. But sometimes when you're planting these things right in the middle of July, everything's in full swing. Um, one of the things you can do if you don't want to plant, if you have a, like if you've ripped out a big part of the garden and you don't need it all for um, planting food, you can add cover crops. Um, cover crops are a plant that you plant on purpose in a, in a bare area to um, keep just weeds from growing. It, and when you turn it into the soil or it breaks down, then it adds nutrition to the soil. And it also keeps the wind from drying out and eroding your garden over the winter. So if we don't have good snow cover and we have a lot of wind, you, you could lose an incredible amount of topsoil. It just blows away. So um, what these cover crops do is help keep that from taking place. It holds the soil in place. Um, it pulls nutrients up closer to the surface, surface because a lot of the cover crops that we're going to talk about have deep roots. Um, brassica family, usually um, mustard gr greens are used for this. They actually, by mixing them into your soil, it actually um, helps prevent certain pests and diseases. Um, mustard and radish are most commonly used for that. Um, so use it anytime an area is not going to be planted for a season or longer. It does take time to break down. So if you're going to plant it like in three weeks, you probably don't want to bother with a cover crop. Um, some of the popular cover crops that do well in our area are winter rye. Um, winter rye, when you plant it, it just looks like grass. Um, it's winter hardy so that you can leave it there for the winter. It'll keep your soil, you know, from blowing away. Um, and you can turn it over in the spring, but it doesn't have, it has to be either rototilled in, but um, not everybody likes or wants to use a roller rototiller or has a rototiller. So you can also just turn it over and, you know, take a pitchfork and turn it over, turn it upside down. Um, you want to do that at least 30 days before you're planting. Um, it's best to do that before you're going to do summer crops like tomatoes, um, uh, or large seeded crops like um, squash and things like that. If you're going to plant carrots there, it's going to be a little lumpy. And um, nice thing about winter rye is you can mix it with other cover crops, field peas, clover. Um, then buckwheat or oats are things you can plant now if you have a bare spot and they're not going to live over the winter. So you don't have to worry so much about tilling them in. They will just die and kind of flop onto the ground. They still hold in your soil, keep it from blowing away. Um, but, they, and, but that's the best to use if you're gonna plant before using really early spring crops because it's gonna be decomposing even over the winter. Um, you can leave the dead plants on the surface of the soil and just kind of move them aside and plant in them. Or you can, you know, scrape them off and put them in your uh, compost pile or use them for mulch. Um, and then the last thing that is commonly used in Michigan, as I mentioned before, is mustard or, or radish. They're biofumigants. They help kill pests in the soil. Um, some people use what is called a tillage radish uh, or a field radish. And if you look at the lower right hand picture, the, le the radishes themselves go deep into the soil. And if you have a really heavy soil or a clay soil, they help by, you, you just leave them there for the winter and then they will decompose. Um, they will um, kind of open up your soil, add organic ma matter to it. Um, cover crops are fun. I, I, I enjoy them. Um, the middle one down here is, mu is buckwheat. I'm sorry, I didn't go through those. That's buckwheat. And then the one on the left is um, winter rye, which just basically looks like grass. Um, the winter rye, the trick is, is to not let it get too big before you turn it in. The bigger it gets, the coarser it gets, the more time it's going to take to decompose. And um, if you don't have a rototiller or something that's really going to break it up, so that's, I just wanted to touch on that real quick before 
we moved on. Now, one of the things besides planting the correct crops, there are other things you can do to extend your garden season. Um, and most of the fall crops that we've discussed um, will last quite a bit into winter, especially, you know, depending on what uh, protection you use. And so we're going to quickly go through floating row covers, plastic sheeting, hoop tunnels, hoop houses, cold frames, and mulch. And if for people who have a lot of time and materials, some of these are, are, pretty, in, are pretty major projects. And some of them are really simple projects. So um, you can make many hoop houses. Um, you can use uh, PV, uh, is it PVC tubing? You can just put it in the ground and bend it over and then put floating row cover or plastic over it. Um, that makes like a little mini greenhouse. You, the most important thing is if you're using a, a row cover, which is a spun bonded material kind of like if you sew it's kind of like interfacing only more pliable um, but it's just it's it's a breathable um, product that, that that you can put over your plants and you can seal the ends and it's used for extending the season it's also used as an insect barrier uh, for certain type you know to keep bugs off your plants um, now if you're going to use plastic you have to be very careful that you pull it off during the day um, and just put it on at night or, and you can see in the middle picture, there's a clamp holding the plastic together kind of to keep it from blowing around. And uh, you just have to make sure before the sun comes out or the next day that you take that off because you can actually scorch your plants with the greenhouse effect of having the sun um, in the greenhouse. It can heat up really fast. And so just, that's just one of the things you just, that's why I prefer a row cover over a plastic. Um, there's a, there's a picture of the floating row cover in the bottom right. Um, you can you can it's, it's pretty much you can see through it. It's it's just uh, it's called spun bonded. So it, it, it you can put it over anything. It's so light you don't really have to have a hoop. That's you know, you can do that, but you can also just lay it on the plants because it's, it. or you can make a structure and put it over the structure. And you can see in the larger picture that there's a uh, sandbags keeping it from blowing away. I can, you know, if you get a stiff wind, you know, you can find your row cover in your neighbor's yard. So if you've got to do something to keep it, we've held it down with bricks, long pipes, all kinds of things, beautiful. Um, Cold frames are a little bit more of a, a structured type of uh, season extender. Um, the one in the upper right hand corner is kind of a traditional one with glass, you know, people use discarded glass windows, you can use plexiglass. Um, again, um, you have to make sure that they're open during the day that, so they don't cook your plants, unless it's downright winter then sometimes you can't open them up if it's zero degrees outside. But um, if you look in the very, the, the, it's the upper right hand picture, but in the left hand corner of that, there's a silver apparatus and that's a, a little hydraulic um, opener that opens it up when it gets to a certain temperature. Now they're, they're kind of spendy, but um, you, you just, it's really, it's better if you're a busy person, if you work and you're going to take off early in the morning before, you know, it's kind of a nice thing. It's a safeguard so you're, you, from, um, burning up your plants by keeping them covered all day. Um, lower right is, is showing, you know, this, a it's a, these are all hardy greens and they've got snow around them and they're still growing because they're so protected. Um, and then the large one, it looks like they've got, you know, windows and they also put uh, plastic over it. You can do that if it's getting really cold. You can double, you put the windows in and double and they put some reflecting uh, material in the back of it um, to kind of reflect because there's less light in the fall, especially as you get later on. Um, there, it reflects the sun onto the plants, kind of gives them a little extra boost. Um, 
sometimes you can make a, a green or a cold frame with just bales of straw. Just put them in a square or a rectangle and then put your, you can just lay the windows on top or you can, um, you know, make a little more of a structure. You put hinges on it so that it opens up. You can, um, the purpose of the brown bottle in the middle of the right hand or the left hand picture is um, because it's, it's full, it would be full of water and, it's cont and it, it warms up during the day as the sun, sun hits the dark bottle. And during the night when it's closed up, it's releasing some of that warmth. It may only be a couple of degrees, but it might make the difference. Um, the upper uh, right hand corner is just a heavily mulched carrot bed. Carrots can be dug all winter long. Um, you don't have to bring them in, you, you, but you do need to mulch them so that the ground doesn't freeze solid around them. Um, if the ground does freeze solid around them and you have a kind of a nice day, you can pull the mulch away and kind of let the sun warm the, the um, but they can freeze and, and thaw in the ground. And as it gets towards spring, they will start to get a little hairy. They'll start be sending out a lot of roots. Carrots are a biennial, so that they do their root growth the first year. And then as in the spring, the growth that comes up is going to eventually produce a seed head. So the first, first year it's the root growth, second year it's seed production. So they, they will stay in there, but as, like I said, if they, if they are in there too close to spring, they're gonna get a little hairy, but certainly still edible. Once you've put all this work into your plant, you're not going to let a little root hairs uh, spoil your fun. So, um, in, in here at Lion Township Public Library, we do have a seed library. Um, seeds for many of the fall vegetables that we I mentioned tonight are going to be available in a seed library starting tomorrow. Um, and we have limited amounts of them. Um, there's a list on the next slide I'm going to leave up as, as we answer questions um, that you can, if you want to write things down. I'm also, I'm going to be sending this list out to my mailing list um, in the next couple of days, and it will also be put on our Facebook page. Um, now we've got the library is open. You can, you're welcome to come in um, wearing a mask, of course, by law. Um, or if you would prefer curbside pickup, we happily um, provide that as well. So just email me at, at pquackenbush at lion.lib.mi.us and if you want to do curbside pickup and we'll work out when and where you want to pick it up. Um, if you do visit the seed, seed library in person, we do ask that you wear gloves when you go through the seed packets. Um, you're not required to by law, but it's a courtesy to other people. Um, there will be a, a box of gloves sitting there and there's also gloves, hand sanitizer, masks, everything you need when you first walk in the door too. So if you would like to be added to my mailing email list, um, I do send out reminders about upcoming programs um, and other gardening and sustainable living news. So email me and let me know. I'd like to be put on your mailing list. Um, it, you don't get a lot of emails, especially now since we're not having that many programs because of the situation. But as spring approaches, we will be having more. So you get a few more emails in the spring than the rest of the year. Um, we also have a Facebook page. Um, LTPL Grows Facebook page, um, which is, you know, as well is in, in addition to having our events, you know, we, when we find garden tips and good articles, we post them on there as well. Um, so uh, I'm going to put on the next slide, which lists um, what we have available. And like I said, I'm going to be putting it on Facebook and sending it out to my mailing list. So if you don't want to sit right here and um, you can do a screenshot or you can, um, you know, list down what you want. And, uh, but you can also email me and ask me to put you on my mailing list and you will receive this list in your email. Um, I'll probably wait a couple of days to do that. So it gives you some of you a chance who aren't already on my list to um, do it. But like I said, you're welcome to come in and get seeds or, or do curbside pickup. 
Um, the seeds that we are um, that we have in the seed library were either donated uh, by um, either seed companies or a seed. There are various seed groups out there that are trying to get seeds into the hands of the people. We were gifted with a very nice donation um, from them um, just recently. And so some of these are from that and some are, so we actually purchased them as part of the, this program. So we hope you enjoy and can put some of these seeds to use. Um, try something different. If you've never tried mustard or turnips, I think you might be surprised at how much you like them grown in the fall. Um, so if it, does anybody have any questions, I'm happy to, um, if you could do it in the comment section, I'll answer any. Let's see anything else. Our little packets for the seed library. Look, I'm gonna do this, all right. Look like this, it'll have the variety name. It'll have um, usually a little directions on how to plant. Um, what we do is we get either get bulk seed or like I said, donated seed, or if we get seed packets donated from a seed company, um, we break them up to, you know, maybe these packets don't have as much as a purchase packet, but it's enough to get you going. And, um, and we are doing a, a, a program on seed saving coming up in um, August, early August, August 3rd, actually, the day before the election. And um, that's going to be our friend Brent, Ben, Bevan Cohen, or Ben Cohen, whatever you um, choose to call him. But he has, he's an author that has written several books on seed saving. And, and so he's going to do, he's going to talk to us about how to save seeds. Um, okay, let's see, what do we have? Um, recommend we are wondering recommendations for the variety, for varieties of broccoli. Yeah, well, we've got, there's one, um, broccoli called solstice and that's that's a, um, a broccoli that's open pollinated so you can save the seeds from it um, there's another variety called I think it's just called emerald um, it's a hybrid broccoli but it comes in really fast so um, as you're looking if through seed and unfortunately we don't have broccoli in our seed library this fall um, at, at the time I was looking for seed for the seed library, I couldn't find any non-hybrid um, seed, but you might still be able to order, order them, but try to get a broccoli that's maybe a 60 day broccoli, um, as opposed to like a 70 or 80 day broccoli. Now some broccolis you plant in the spring and they don't start producing till fall, but if you want them to come in before the, you know, the hard frost, then you've got to do one that's more like 50 to 60 days. Um, okay, our next question is about fertilizing the fall garden. Um, well, we always like compost. Um, if, you're, if you're going to use like a, a manure or something like that um, from an animal, a lot of people like to use chicken or goat or rabbit. Um, it's usually a pretty good idea to compost at first, but on the, in the fall, um, you can put all of those things directly on the garden but not necessarily directly on your new plants. So it's kind of a, it, it's, it, if, you, if you just have a bare spot and you wanna put fertilizer on it to have it break down over the, summer, uh, over the winter and be ready to plant in the spring, that's great. But you, you, you really wanna use composted materials. Now, if you wanna use a, um, a, a, what we call a store-bought fertilizer, a quaint way of putting it. But uh, uh, if you want to purchase a fertilizer, there are some organic varieties out there. Um, you can use just any standard uh, basic vegetable fertilizer. Um, so, you know, it's, it's kind of whatever your choice is. And you can also buy bagged compost as well. Um, there's also, um, Compost can be delivered from various companies. Uh, I know Tuthill Gardens is one close to South Lyon that um, you can arrange to have compost delivered. And um, you, that's if you 
need quite a bit. And I think that you could also take, go there and just get it dumped into your truck or you can bag it up there or have it put in garbage cans. I think, I don't know how you would have to talk to them, but yeah, you can get some fresh compost at this time of year. It's a great, uh, it's, the, it's the safest thing because it won't burn your plants. And can you tell us the name of that place one more time? Oh, I'm sorry. It's Tuthill Farms. Um, it's um, on, I think it's on Marshall Road, um, but it's, it's in the South Lyon area. And their website is pretty informative and they're also um, happy to talk to you about what's the best thing for you to get. Um, you can also, if you, if you can't get it from the place like that or you're only looking for a bag of it, most of the garden centers do carry compost in bags that you can use too. Um, and that would be like someplace like Mike's Garden Center or like I said, some of the big box like Lowe's and places like that that have bagged things will also have compost. Okay, how should we pair the plants when planting in our gardens? Um, oh, you mean like, um, like companion planting? Well, that's a whole nother, <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole nother uh, program, um, but I, I, I guess you would want to, when I'm, when I'm growing things, different crops close together, I'm, I'm trying to think about where, where, what direction is the light coming from. You wouldn't want to plant something that's like maybe your lettuce and have it be totally shaded by a larger plant. Um, so, so you kind of want to keep that in mind as what, how's, how's the light going to hit it? Um, after, you know, after all of the, everything's replanted, you have to think about um, certain plants don't get along with each other, but in the, in the fall, you're growing so rapidly. Um, I don't know if it's something that, you know, you're not going to be planting marigolds around your, your plants. Uh, that's not really much of an option this late in the year. So I think just, just kind of make, think about how tall they're going to get and, and make sure they're not gonna get shaded out or some someplace like rutabagas are surprisingly vigorous. And I have planted rutabagas too close both to each other and to other plants. And then, then they're all of a sudden their big leaves are sh shadowing things out. So you wanna pay attention to spacing. Um, and, and some plants need a lot more space than others. And, and, and you can also just with greens, if you don't want to have a separate row of lettuce and a separate row of mustard and a separate row of this and that, you can just mix them together and, and just broadcast it on the area and kind of rake it in and just kind of see what happens. You can have a total mixed greens. You can put some kale in there. You can put uh, arugula in there and just have a mixed green bed. So, or you can plant those things, you know, separately but broadcast and broadcast just means you're just kind of sprinkling the seeds around rather than putting them in a row. And um, anytime you can eat the thinnings as you're pulling them out, if you if they're if things are kind of tight, you pull out some of the things and leave others. But that works really well well for green, leafy greens.